Josh, Teofimo Lopez, that has emerged as your next opponent, a mandatory. Yeah. Um, what's your thoughts on that? Yeah, I think it's a huge fight. You know, um, Teofimo Lopez is, for one, is a big character. You know, he's got a lot to say. He's been shouting my name out for a while as well. So, yeah, it's been it's, he is a he's a good fighter. You know, he's had a couple of bad performances his last couple of fights, but he is a great fighter. You know, he's f- like former world champion, uh, unified world champion at uh, lightweight. So he's coming up and he's want to make a name, and uh, you know he's in the mandatory position for the uh, the title. So yeah, it's it's a good fight. I'm really excited for it. It's going to be a a great fight. Definitely all action because. He comes to fight and as I come to fight as well, so we're definitely not going to have to go looking for each other. So, yeah, it's going to be a real exciting fight. Yeah, given that then, um, how tough is it? Does, does it mean you have to do more research on him or do you know each other inside out, do you feel? No, I don't know him inside out, but I've, I've saw him fight a couple of times. Obviously, watched his fight with Lomachenko and a couple of his other fights. So, yeah, I know I know of him and I know how he fights. So, he's a very good, talented fighter, you know, and it's, uh, it's going to be a great fight. I can't wait. You mentioned he's been calling you out for a while. How much does that fire you up as well? Because there's, there is a bit of rivalry there already. Yeah, well, I think uh, I think I might fight the two of them. I don't know if I want to fight most, uh, either his dad or, or him, you know, because both of them have been shouting out a lot. So, yeah, it's, um, it's going to be a good fight. You know, he's going to... It'll be an interesting build-up for sure, that's for, that's for sure. You're taking it in good humour there. Does it get under your skin in any way, some of the things he's been saying already? And, and you mentioned his dad, or does that just fire you up more? Nah, no, really. It's all part of the game, you know. It's all part of the, you know, selling fights and him promoting himself and creating interest in a fight. And uh, yeah, it will, it will create huge interest. And when the build up comes along, when he starts talking the smack, I'm going to give it back. So yeah, it's going to be good. Yeah, it's just part of the game. Now, obviously, you have that injury just now. So what's and it's very early, but what's the thinking on when and where this fight will take place? Um, I'm not sure. Um, I'm sort of aiming for getting back and being ready to fight um, in June sort of time. Um, my, my, the medical team, the specialists and all that are saying around about June time. So, yeah, I'm going to be aiming for then. It's quite a significant injury, so it's not one that I want to rush back, get back to training and do it again and make it worse. Um, so, yeah, I'm just taking my time and getting myself back on my feet nice and slowly and surely doing all my rehab and the physio work as well. So, yeah, it's quite a bad injury, but we're getting there. I'll get to the injury in a minute, but in terms of venue, would you be willing to go back to America again, or is it somewhere more closer to home, Glasgow yeah. last time out, but maybe even Edinburgh? Yeah, well, there's there's sort of three options, really. You know, there's, um, there's Easter Road um, in the middle of June, or there's the Castle, or the Hydro, really, but and for the fight of this magnitude, I think I would love to go to either Easter Road or the Castle in a great uh, sort of arena, if it was going to be this side. If it's that side, it might be over in uh, Madison Square Gardens or in New York somewhere. So fighting in Madison Square Garden would be another bucket list for me. You know, I've, I've boxed in the mirror a couple of times. Um, I boxed there, obviously, when I won the title um, against Ramirez, but there was no one there. So this might be a chance for me to tick another bucket list off and take fans over to uh, the USA and do one over there again. You mentioned the injury. Just talk us through what is the, the injury is and, and what you did. Yeah, I, I did it on the Monday of the Chris Eubank and Liam Smith fight. I did it in sparring. I just felt a, a pop in my tear and, and just like horrendous pain. You know, so I tried to, I stopped the sparring straight away, took the boot off. It was all like red raw and my heel was all really all swollen and badly inflamed. So I knew I had done something. Um, I went to see the doctors on the Tuesday and got a scan on the Wednesday Got the results back on the Thursday. Uh, it was a pretty bad injury, a complete tear on the ten- uh, plasha fanta- plata- plantar fascia tendon uh, on my heel. Um, so like I ca- my foot was completely immobilised, like I couldn't move my toes and things like that. So it was pretty, pretty bad pain. Um, got the results back on the Thursday, and then told the coach on Friday that you know it's it's looking pretty bad. You know you're, you're at least six, seven weeks off your feet. So yeah, it's a uh, it's, it's a pretty bad one. What have you been able to do since then, there, or, or how how's the recovery coming along, and what you've been able to do? I've not really been doing much, you know. I've been sort of in the gym doing my upper body sort of weights and sort of little upper body sessions, and sort of trying to stay off my feet a little bit. I can do a lot. I'm starting to be able to walk in that a little bit better now, which is good. So, yeah, they went to see the specialist um, on Tuesday, 
and they're saying they can maybe start getting a little bit back on my feet just slowly but surely doing a little bit of cycling a little bit of swimming and that now so that's I'm able to get slightly more active now which is good but still keeping the pressure off the feet Jack Catrell, how disappointed were you that that fight has not been able to go ahead given the injury? Yeah, I'm gutted. You know, was, we were only we were actually about to announce the fight at the Liam Smith fight. You know, so I told Ben Shalom on the Friday that the results of the the scan and whatever, and said that there's no point in announcing this fight because it's not going to happen. I'm not going to be ready. So yeah, I was pretty gutted. You know, because I gave up a lot sacrificed a lot for to make this fight happen you know uh, vacated my titles um, to make this happen you know and I got offered bigger and better fights um, out there to go and take and but I said no to them to make this fight happen put all the doubt that was there to bed and move on with my career and then then that happens you know it's just one of these things that happen and out of my control really so yeah it's that is what it is just have to go with the punches he might say, some boxing fans might say, you're trying to duck this fight because everything that happened, how do you react to that? <laughs> I just laugh, you know, I mean, i become undisputed world champion on the road, you know, I beat uh, Progress in the WBSS, then went over to America, beat um, Ramirez in Vegas, you know, so as to say that I'm afraid of someone is just, it's just ridiculous, you know, it's just absolutely ridiculous. Um, there was no one more than me that, who wanted to put this right and sort of move on with my career and put it to bed. The WBO got in touch on Monday. I got an email saying that they've ordered me to fight Teofimo Lopez, you know, so it's one that I want to do because it's the only belt I've got left, the WBO, so I want to keep it. If I went and then fought Jack, I'd then be fighting on with no titles, so I want to keep the title. I want to, they're, they're all my belts. They're still all my belts, but I want to keep this one and... I want to um, fight this fight and then, you know, further on down the line, get Jack and he can still fight for a title. But I don't know what's going to happen now. Yeah, I was just going to say, this this fight with Jack Catrell, because it doesn't seem to be going away, will it happen in the future, do you feel? Or do you want it to happen in the future? Yeah, definitely will. Yeah, just obviously not just now. It's out of my hands. It's out of my control. You know, it's not my fault that the, the WBO then got in touch and says, you've got to fight this guy or basically strip you. So... I was right, okay, but at the end of the day, it's out of my control, and uh, the the good thing is about this fight, it's a much bigger fight than the Carroll fight, I think, it's a much bigger fight, and it's a harder fight um, than the Carroll fight, he's a much higher calibre of opponent than Carroll, he's been at a higher level, he's been in with better fighters, and he's done the business, you know, he's been there and wore the t-shirt, so yeah, I think it's a, I think it's a bigger fight, and I don't think the Carroll fight's going to go anywhere, to be honest, I can visit, revisit that down the line. Is the rivalry still as intense or even more intense now with Jack, do you feel? Yeah, definitely. It's, t- it's definitely turned up a little bit. You know, he's he's made that a little bit more personal. So just by the way him and his team are crying about on about it, moaning like little girls, little kids. You know, they're just, uh, they're just moaning, crybabies, you know. Sore losers is what they are. Yeah, but he'll get the chance to try and rectify it. But I highly doubt that he's going to go get anywhere near me. In terms of uh, you, you know, previously you've talked about stepping up a weight and there's big fights if you if you were to step up. You wanted to stay and give Jack his chance and, and now you have this mandatory. What's the long-term thinking now in, in terms of where you go and what you do? The long-term plans are still the same, you know. Um, move up and wait eventually and try and become a two-weight world champion. I mean, there's still big fights at 140 here. There's obviously, we've got this Lopez fight, which is a huge fight. So I'll be concentrating on that. Then you've got the Jack fight as well, you've obviously still got that, and then you've also got a, a rematch with Progre, but it's down the line. So there's still big fights at 140 for me, but my real intentions for my goals and ambitions in the in the sport is to become a two-weight world champion. The real big fights in boxing is your, like say, your Terence Crawfords and things like that, you know, your, your Jerome Boots Ennis and things like that. These guys are huge, huge names in the sport, you know, so... Your Spences as well, your Errol Spences as well. So these, this is a long-term goal, again, is to become a two-weight world champion. You know, and that's why I'm in the sport, because I still have the hunger and the motivation and the, the goals and the drive. So just finally then, uh, back to Lopez. Um, it will intensify, no doubt, in the months to come. But is that something now that even though you might not be able to train fully just now, the preparation kind of starts? You start kind of just 
getting the mindset right. Yeah, definitely. It's it's a huge fight, and it's one that gives me that excitement and that buzz, and you know, gives me that you know, there's a bit between the teeth there as well between the two of us. Sorry, um, so I've got that there as well, you know, and it is a real big fight, and it's going to be an exciting one. I do not think that it'll go the distance. There's definitely maybe one that's going to get knocked out, you know. So a lot of people are probably hoping that I'm going to get knocked out because I'm the bad guy now, supposedly. So. Um, yeah, it's going to be it's going to be a, a good fight. I'm I, I'm I'm up for it, you know. So, yeah, the preparations can kind of already started. I'm still in the gym, training away, doing what I can off my feet. So, yeah, still in the gym.